Hey guys, so we're going to dive into the peanut circle in this um, chapter. You guys already created it, so you have your stuff in front of you. I'm hoping also that you see in your packet, the first page is your unit circle put together. So if you have not done that already, I would say put everything all together in one page. That way you don't have to keep flipping back and forth your creation. Okay. And don't mind the numbers and everything. I know they're a little bit off. Um, so don't focus on that. What we're going to do today is the first thing we're going to do is convert degrees to radians, radians to degrees, and then do coterminal and reference angle. The next video, I will do evaluating. So this is almost a two day thing. So you don't feel as though the lesson is so long. Okay. Now, radians. Well, the idea is that we've been using degrees, right? We use degrees with uh, law of sines, law of cosines, but the truth is we can use it in radians. Radians is just a different measure that we can uh, do with trig in that system, okay? So again, units being like, instead of using feet, I'm using inches, okay? So there are two units that we use with trig and we have to be able to know the difference. Um, in 1060, Math 1060 uh, College Trig, you use both, you go back and forth no matter what. Um, when you use it in calculus, you stick with radians, you don't really do degrees at all. And so we wanna make sure that we can convert back and forth. Well, just like we would do with converting units in uh, like big feet and inches, right? We would say that, there are 12 inches in one foot. And then we would convert that based on the unit. Well, that's what we're gonna use. One pi is 180 degrees. So this fraction right here is actually the value of one, okay? A pi is half a circle, right? Because two pi would be the full circle. Just like half a circle is 180, a full circle is 360, okay? So how do we convert these? Well, so if I have degrees here, what I'm going to do is when I multiply by one, right? Cause I'm not changing anything. I want the same unit on the bottom. So they cancel. So I'm gonna put the 180 in the denominator. Cause as you can see a degree over a degree cancels. Now, of course, we need to multiply by that value of one so we don't change the value. Well, 180 is the same thing as pi, okay? And then what we do is we can multiply straight across. Now, usually you will want to keep it in pi units, okay? Uh, once in a while, you might see that we want radians, but we don't use pi. I'll go to that when we come there. So. What you wanna do, if you are allowed to use a calculator, hint, hint, um, is you would take 30 divided by the 180, okay? Of course, it gives you a decimal, so you would go math, enter, enter, which gives us one sixth, okay? Now, don't forget, pi is still there, okay? So we can either write this as one sixth pi, or, you can write it as pi over six. Um, more than likely, you're gonna see pi over six, okay? All right, let's do the same thing with 225. So 225 and then we had degrees on top, right? So we're gonna put degrees on the bottom. So pi over 180. And then in your calculator, do uh, 225 divided by 180, math, enter, enter, and that will give you 5 fourths. Again, you can write it as 5 fourths pi or 5 pi over 4. 405. Now this, of course, these two degrees, right, are on our unit circle but 405 is not on our unit circle. So again, 405 degrees times pi over 180. Do that in your calculator. 
Map, enter, enter. You get 15 pi over four. Okay. Negative 270. Again, negative 270 degrees. Treat it as if it was just 270, so pi over 180. And then we get negative 3 pi over 2. Don't worry, we'll talk about what happens when it's negative. Before we convert back to the degrees, if you haven't already added the uh, radians to your unit circle, please do so now. Okay, you can write, and I put all my radians right here. Okay, because we have the degrees and we have our coordinate pairs. So what I marked on mine, see I have my radians, okay? This is going to help us later. So do that now. Pause the video. Do that now if you haven't done that already. All right, I'm going to continue. So now we're going from radians to degrees. So here we have pi over 6. Now what we're going to do, remember, we're going to multiply it by the value of 1 again, so we don't change that value. But since radians is in the numerator, we need to get rid of that. So to get rid of that, we put it in the denominator. And what's the same as pi? Well, 180 degrees. Those cancel, right? And now in our calculator, we're doing 180 divided by 6, which is 30 degrees. And of course, I'm glad that matched. Look, these two are the same value, OK? So again, we have 3 pi over 2. And we're going to multiply. Since we want to get rid of the pi, we're going to put that in the denominator. And what's on top? 180, because the pi's cancel. Now in our calculator, because it's a little bit more calculations, you could do 3 times 180 divided by 2. You could do 3 divided by 2 times 180. Doesn't matter. You'll come out with the same thing. And that equals 270 degrees. Let's do our 20 pi over 9. We need pi in the denominator to get rid of it. 180 at the top. Okay. Now, by the way, if I weren't using a calculator, I could probably do this by going 180 divided by 9 is 20. 20 times 20 is 400. So there's little tricks to do without a calculator. Okay, negative 16 pi over 7. Now, I'm going to tell you straight out here, you would need a calculator for this one. Because unfortunately, this does not come out to a nice number. <laughs> okay, so get rid of those. Now, if I were to keep it in fraction form, this ends up being, don't forget the negative, because this was negative, 2,880 degrees, well, over 7 degree. That's approximately 411.4. 29 degree. Okay, now as you can see, guys, I kept anytime I talked about degrees, I put the degree symbol there. This is important because you're going to run into situations, right? So when you see a degree symbol, right? So let's say a number and then degree, of course, that means degree. Now, if we see a number and then pi right next to it, of course, it's obvious that it's going to be radian. OK. Now, what if you just see a number? Well, when you just see a number, no degree symbol, it means radian. 
what this means is that pi is already calculated in there. Remember, what is pi? 3.14, blah, 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 right? So that's a number. So when you have a circle, you start at zero and you go half that circle, which is pi, that is actually 3.14, blah, 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 right? So just in case, because I know you run into it on your homework sometimes, is when it's a number, it's in radians. All right, now let's talk about sketching these angles. Yes, it's nice to have your unit circle and to find them, but not all of our stuff is on the unit circle. So where is that going to be? All right, so what we're gonna do is you always start at zero. So sometimes I like labeling my axis according to my degree or my pi. So this would be zero, 90 degrees, 180, and 270. And as you can see, we go counterclockwise when we do our positive degrees, okay? Now, the other thing I think about, and sometimes the unit circle will help you on this, is if I wanna be somewhat correct, I might go halfway through. And halfway between 90 and 180 is 135. So that tells me that 137 is going to be a little bit beyond halfway. Okay, so I'm going to mark that. Now, when you draw your degree, you always start, or your angle, you always start from zero and you go to that side. Okay, this side is what we call the terminal side. Okay, this is where you start, and that is the terminal side. That is where you end. Okay, now when you do radians, well, first again, let me label this, but with radians. So this is zero, this is pi over two, right? This is pi, half circle is pi. So this is one and a half, which is three pi over two. This helps me. Now watch though, how many sixes? can go into 17, guys, because look at this. If I go zero, one pi, or a half pi, one pi, one and a half pi, this is two pi, right? One rotation is two pi. And then four pi would be going around twice, so on and so on. So I want to see how many pi's I can go around, right? So what I might do is say uh, 17 divided by six. 17 divided by six is two, okay? And then, uh, let's see, that leaves me a remainder of five. So I'm actually looking at five pi over six. Do you guys see that? My terminal side will be at five pi over six because this is for rotations, okay? Now, um, let's see. So where is five pi over six? Well, if I can look at my unit circle, because of course that one's on my unit circle, or I can think of it as here's, let me darken that a little bit. This is one pi over six. This is two pi over six. This is three pi, right? Here's three pi over six times pi over two. Uh, this one is four pi over six. This one is five pi over six. So I'm going to darken that for the terminal side. But remember, we went around the circle a bunch of times. Our answer wasn't five pi over six. It was 17 pi over six. So how many times did we go around the circle? Well, remember that we start at zero. This is one pi. So in other words, six, right? Because we're labeling six. So this is six, 12. I should have made this smaller. Okay. So once around 12, and then we go to five pi over six. So that makes it 17 pi over six. Okay. I actually like it when they do a little bit smaller so I can see it. 
Okay, because remember, even though this is pi, that's the same thing as six pi over six, right? So this is six pi over six. This is 12 pi over six. And then we have five more of them. Okay, so watch on how you're going around. All right, negative. This is where it plays. When you see the negative, okay, when you see the negative, you are going to do counterclockwise. So if you are like me, I kind of want to label where my stuff would be counterclockwise. So of course we start at zero, but instead of going 90 up here, I'm going to go 90 down here. Now, of course, that would be a negative 90. This would be a negative 180. And this would be a negative 270. Right? Halfway in between would now be a negative 225. This allows me to say to negative 245. It's going to be somewhere up here. Okay. Now, where did we start? We started at zero. Now, be careful. We went counterclockwise. So we're going to go just like that. We're going to show that counterclockwise. Okay. 4 pi over 3. Okay. So as you can see, there's a 3 in here. So we're going 1 pi and then a little bit more. So we're going 1 pi and leaving pi over three. That makes the four, okay? I'm kind of splitting that up. Now it is negative. So I'm gonna label these going backwards. So this is zero. This would be negative pi over two. This would be negative pi and negative three pi over two. Okay, so watch this. So it's a full pi. So see a full pi right here, and that has me here. And then I have to go pi over three more. So pi over three is gonna be up here because it's closer to one and a half. So again, we started at zero, but we're going counterclockwise because it's negative. There we go. And of course, that was negative four pi over three. Okay. Now, really quickly before we move on, I want to show you another example. Remember how I told you about a number of radians? Okay. I'm going to do another example on the side. Okay. So this is zero. Now, what I'll do, my calculator is this. I'm actually going to put, make sure that your calculator's in radians because I'm going to use it in radians, okay? So if I said pi divided by two, so that means right here is the full number of 1.571, keeps going, of course. This is your 3.14 and uh, three pi divided by two is 4.712. So let's say by chance that you get a question that says draw, let's do um, draw five. Now I know it's in radians because there's no degree symbol with it. Okay, so where does that come up? That means pi is already involved in that five. Okay, so that's why I'm looking at these numbers instead of pi over two, I'm looking at it as 3.14 divided by two, okay? So five would end up right somewhere in the fourth quadrant, okay? So it's gonna be just like that. Does that make sense? Okay, so the value of pi is incorporated in that number. All right, coterminal. Coterminal angles are in standard position with the initial side being on the X. So that starting side 
and they have a communal terminal side, that ending side, right? So example, 30. 30 is right here. See that small angle right there? 30. That means we end up in the same spot for both these other numbers. 390 is just a full circle in that extra 30 degrees. So as you can see, your, your terminal side ends up on the, are the same, right? So that's why it's called co-terminal. It's just that we're going around the circle. Now, how do you get that? Well, if you were asked to give co-terminal sides, if you wanted a positive or a negative, you can add or subtract 360 degrees. But of course, if you're in radians, you're going to add or subtract 2 pi. Okay. So that's how to get multiple angles with the ending, the uh, terminal side being the same. Okay. And then we're going on to reference angles. Reference angles helps us because we can find the value of any angle knowing what the reference angle is. The reference angle is the comparison of the angle, but in the first quadrant, okay? So we're gonna say this angle that's in the second quadrant is just like this angle in the first quadrant, or um, a certain angle in the fourth quadrant is the same or comparison to this angle in the first quadrant. So we're always gonna say the reference angle is the angle we're looking at in the first quadrant. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, if it's already in the first quadrant, then we know that is the reference angle, okay? Now, if we're looking in the second quadrant, so let's say our, our angle is 120 degrees. What we wanna say is, hey, what angle in the first quadrant is just like that? So I'm gonna show you with your unit circle, right? So if you look, 100, in 20 degrees right here, that's our pink angle, right? So in the first quadrant, which one is like that? It's the 60, okay? So we're always comparing it to the first quadrant. How would we do that? Especially if our angles weren't on the, or if our nice angles weren't with the unit circle, right? Well, what we do, is as you can see, how would we get from 120 to 60? And I know there's multiple ways, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 180 and we're gonna subtract that angle in the second quadrant because we went in the first, so we want it positive, right? Okay, so now how can we do this for all angles? Well, that would be 180 minus our alpha, whatever angle we're given. What if it were in radians? Well, what's 180 in radians? Pi. So we would do pi minus the angle given. All right, what if we're in quadrant three? Now don't forget, when we talk about quadrants, we're talking about going counterclockwise. Excuse me. So what happens here? We have a 240, right? So we want to say, hey, it's closest, our reference angle, since we're going back to 180, because that's another way to look at it, it's where it hits that 360 or 180, right, is 60. How would we do that? Well, let's do that right now. So we take 240 minus 180 gives us that 60. Right? So if we were to write that in general terms, that actually would be alpha minus 180. What if we were to do that for the radians? Well, that would be alpha minus pi. And what about our fourth quadrant? Well, as you can see, it's closer to 360. So we're gonna hit here. So, our, excuse me. Our reference angle would be our 45. So how do we get that? Well, that would be 360 minus 315. 
and that's our 45. So what do we do that in, in a general term? Well, that's 360 minus our alpha. Or what's 360 in radians? 2 pi minus our alpha. Okay. So here are two problems we're going to go over. I actually want to, yeah, let's go over this one, but um, the negative makes it a little confusing when it comes to the reference angle, okay? So first let's sketch the angle, right? So if I think about this, this is zero, negative 90, remember we're going clockwise, negative 180, negative 270. Okay, and then, uh, so, what this is 135 right or yes 135 so 130 is going to be kind of coming out here okay and it's going this way so that's just me sketching the angle right there now before i do the reference angle i'm going to do a positive or negative coterminal remember that goes back up here what do we do we add and subtract your uh 360. So for a positive coterminal, we take our alpha, which is negative 130, and we're going to add 360 to it because that makes it positive, right? And when we get that, and you do that in your calculator or in your head, you get 230. Same thing to get a negative coterminal. We take our alpha, and to get negative or more negative, right, we need to subtract 360. Imagine being in one spot. To continue being in that spot, you can turn and turn and turn a full 360. And that gives us a negative 490. All right, ready? No. This is where it gets a little confusing considering we just went over these notes, right? So our quadrants go do this one, first, second, third, and fourth, okay? Counterclockwise. But with our negative degrees, which way do we go? Clockwise. So kind of think of it like this is our first, this is our second because this then tells us what to do with our stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 180 and because I'm, I'm already going backwards like this, I don't have to worry about that negative. I'm gonna subtract the angle, okay? But without the negative. And as you can see, my reference angle is now 50 degrees. Now, why does that make sense? Well, think of this. Halfway of 90 would be 45. So this technically is 40. And we're a little bit more this way. So 50 degrees. Okay. That's why drawing it out really helps you. I know starting with the negative was a little confusing. But this is this one's not negative. It just says radians. So we have to be careful that way. So Five pi over six, you can look at your unit circle, you can count your pi's over six, because that would be one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so I'm gonna sketch that. There's my five pi over six. Let's talk about positive and negative coterminal. Positive coterminal. Remember, what do we add to our alpha? So we have five pi over six. We're adding two pi, because we're in radians. Now, going back to our fractions, how do you add fractions? What do you need? You need a common denominator. So I'm gonna change that two pi, excuse me, to 12 pi, over six. Now, for those of you who are like, wait, how'd you get that? Well, common denominator is six, right? So whatever I do at the bottom, I have to do the top. 
So I'm multiplying it by six. Now when I add those together, I get 17 pi over six. And that is a positive coterminal radian. Negative coterminal. We have five pi over six minus two pi. Again, I'm going to change that to a common denominator, five pi over six minus 12 pi over six equals a negative seven pi over six. So that is our negative coterminal. Could you make tons of others? Yeah, you can just keep subtracting negative two pi if you want and keep going. Now let's talk about our reference angle. Now we can kind of go back to these notes in the correct format for the fact, or in the way that we were shown, right? For the fact that we are going counterclockwise. So counterclockwise, what quadrant are we in? We're in the second quadrant. We are closer to 180, but we are going backwards. So what do we do with that? We take 180, right? And we're going backwards, so we're gonna subtract our alpha. Oops, why am I using 180, right? We're in radians. So instead of using 180, what am I gonna use? Pi, pi minus five pi over six. Now, again, you can think of this as six pi over six, right? To have our common denominator. And then six pi over six minus five pi over six equals one pi over six. Just always refer back to these notes. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And when it's negative, take your time with going backwards with it, okay? All right, let's do some practice. <laughs> 